Hi, my name is Kai Wofreund and I'm the product manager for cardiology and resuscitation at Neon Coden Europe. I'd like to welcome you to our two days seminar. I'm glad that we have John Bastian Etty with us. He's a very experienced pre-hospital medical expert, lecturer and paramedic professional. Welcome John. Thank you Kai. It's a pleasure to be part of this project. We are curious to learn more about a leading diagnostic tool, the ECG. You named this webinar Improving ECG Interpretation with New Perspective. What do you want to emphasize? I want to emphasize the proper use of a pre-hospital 12-lead ECG. John, acute coronary syndromes, in short ACS, remain as one of the major causes for global death. ACS vary from unstable angina to acute myocardial infarctions to sudden cardiac death. We know that you are confronted with those situations day by day. And now we will listen to learn more about these medical cases. Before we start, please feel free to ask your questions in the chat box. We will come back to you later and answer these questions. Welcome to our workshop today. This workshop will focus on the pre-hospital acquiring of a 12-lead ECG and the STEMI will be our focus in the discussions. We will start with a small reminder <coughs> that the acute coronary syndrome is still the common cause of death in Europe and worldwide in the industrial nations. We're talking about around about 20% of all deaths in Europe are accounted by myocardial infarction. Typically, the acute coronary syndrome appears with symptoms such as radiating chest pain, shortness of breath and sweating. So, like me in the moment. Uh, <laughs> and if you encounter a patient with the symptoms, you have to acquire as soon as possible a 12-lead ECG. Of course, not everyone is easy like Oscar because here the intercostal space is clearly visible. In a real person we have a lot of layers over the intercostal spaces and the easiest way to identify the intercostal space is if we use the sternum for orientation. First thing is we're looking for the angle of Lewis that is on the top of the sternum and a little bit below left and right we are able to identify the first intercostal space. What we're looking for is a fourth intercostal space. So we're going down, first intercostal, second intercostal, third intercostal, here's the fourth intercostal. That is the place we want. Left and right of the sternum, we will place our first leads, chest lead one and chest lead two. I will do that on Oscar. So thank you for your cooperation. So next landmark we have to identify is in the middle of the clavicular fifth intercostal space. So we break down the clavicular in two pieces in the middle. There it is. We are going down to the fifth intercostal space. In the fifth intercostal space, we will place the fourth chest lead. And there's a good reason for that. Because we have to imagine a line between second and fourth electrode and we will place in the middle of this line the third electrode, third chest lead. I will do that. Okay, next landmark we are looking for is the front axilla line, fifth intercostal space, going here, and here's the fifth intercostal space, frontal axilla line, place it here, and then we are going to the mid axilla line. I have to go around Oscar, ask him, please lift your arm. Yeah, thank you for your cooperation and I will place there the chest lead 6. Now you see the proper placement of the chest leads and we still need the extremity leads. In the extremity leads it's not so difficult. First of all, on a regular way we have to place it on the extremities. To make it easier in a pre-hospital setting we can use the connection points of the extremities. You can place it over the joints, over the bone, over the muscles. There are a lot of discussions out in the market. What is the best spot? I like to use the bones a little bit because you have no interference by the muscles, but it's your way. 
you have to place the, elect uh, the extremity leads 10 centimeters away from the heart. That is the minimum and that is all for the moment. I will do that with Oscar. And now we have the placement, the proper placement of the electrodes. And we can now ask our machine to read a 12 lead in a moment. So now we have a proper placement and I will start to acquire a 12 lead on my machine. So now we have a proper placement of the electrodes and I want to remind you that it is really important to have this proper placement because if you imagine these electrodes like a camera. A camera has a unique angle and a unique view. Like this camera in front of me, you have now a view to my whole upper body and if you change the position of the cameras, I have to change, just a moment, yeah. If it is too high, you will see only my face and if it is too low, you might see only my belly. But we want to see my upper body and that's, that is the same in the electrodes. I want to see the proper place of the heart. I want to write a proper ECG. If I misplace the electrodes, I'm unable to do that. And it's very, very important that the hospital is able to reproduce my results. And that is only possible if we have a standard. So take care placing the electrodes. Now we have placed the electrodes. Now is the question what we are able to see. And to be honest, like you see, we will have a proper view on the front, on the left front of the heart. And we will never see the garden on the right side. And it is not a good way to buy a house and you never saw the back of the house. So same in the heart. First look is in the front and we are looking for some damages in the front. So that is the heart, that is the placement of the heart in my chest and that is our view. And with the majority of leads we are looking on this side of the heart. So that is the lateral view on the heart. Second view on the heart will be made by 2, 3 and AVF is inferior and that is the only part looking a little bit on a portion of the right heart. Chest lead 1, 2, 3 and 4 are looking on the front and the septal part of the heart. So you see we have a proper view on the left part and only a sneak view on the back part of the heart and that will cause problems I will talk later a little bit about because I think it is very important to know what is our view, what we can really see and how to fix this issue. So after proper placement and acquiring by our machine we have a printout next to us and the next task for the pre-hospital provider is to do a proper interpretation of the ECG. In this seminar we are only looking for a STEMI, for an ST elevation myocardial infarction. So according to the guidelines, trained EMS personnel can identify a STEMI with a little bit of training and is defined as a ST elevation of 0.1 millivolt elevation at least in two adjacent limb leads or 0.2 millivolt in two adjacent precordial leads. And that is what we're looking for. So we're looking onto our ECG and I prefer to go first for leads 2, 3 and AVF because that are again a small reminder the only ECGs looking into the backyard and there might be the surprise. If I'm able to spot there an ST elevation the next task is to verify this elevation that it is really a right side myocardial infarction by placing another electrode on Oscar. So Oscar, I'm sorry, I have to place another electrode and we have to place only one. That is the easiest way to go again mid-clavicular and we are going to the fifth intercostal space. We will place there another electrode 
and I will grab here the cable, place it here to V4 right. Now I have to acquire again a 12 lead ECG, print out and I'm looking for an ST elevation in V4R. If there is an ST elevation, I have proof that we will have a surprise in our backyard. That is one way to spot a uh, right side infarction. The next way to spot a right side infarction is to look for leads V1 to V4, so the first chest leads. If we spot there in chest lead 1 to 3 an ST depression, it is also a hint that something is wrong in my backyard. Now the recommendation in the moment is that I have to place another three electrodes to my patient. And Oscar, I'm sorry, I have to go around you again. And these electrodes has to be placed on the back of the patient and called, of course, seven, eight and nine. I don't do that, Oscar, but yeah. In a pre-hospital setting, it is very uncomfortable to move the patient to the to reach the back to place the electrodes there. So my experience is, and I'm teaching in, in Germany, in a lot of big cities like Berlin, Duisburg, Metman County. Um, I had the honor also to teach in Denmark, in Portugal, in, uh, in the UK. I really never found paramedics or pre-hospital staff keen to do that with the patient. We have to find an easier way and a little bit later we will talk about an easier way to visualize the right side easily for us and to the benefit of our patient. Okay, one small step back because I said trained EMS personnel can identify ST elevation myocardial infarct. My experience is that sometimes stuff has some problems to identify an ST elevation infarction and I only want to emphasize you to do that the proper way. First thing to do it proper again is a proper leadment, lead placement. Second thing we want to ensure is that you understand what is an adjacent lead. To identify the adjacent limbs we created this chart to make it easier for you. And as you can see, the chart is all so colored to make it more visible which limbs are adjacent. First of all, it's a lateral view on the heart that are lead 1, AVL, V5, V6. Then we have the inferior view on the heart, lead 2, lead 3 and AVF. And last but not least, the anterior septal view V1 to V4. Now after the chart we have to look for the ST elevation. As you already know we are looking for 0.1 or 0.2 millivolt of elevation. I show you here that is, please don't criticize my drawing, that is looks like a normal ECG complex. What we're looking now for is the so-called J point and the ST segment. That is the first thing we have to look for. And what we want to see, if we are want to spot an ST elevation, it's an ST elevation like that. Yeah, that is a classical ST elevation. It looks a little bit like an elephant inside a snake from a famous writer here. Yeah? And if you spot that in two adjacent leads, you have nasty elevation infarction. You have to inform the cath lab. The other thing is in lead V1 to V3 we are looking for a possible ST depression as a hint of a problem in our backyard. And again here is a small artwork. Yeah, we are looking for something like that. Yeah, quite easy to spot changes in the ECG like I draw to you. That is the one and only thing you have to look for if you want to do a proper interpretation from the point of view we're looking for an ST elevation myocardial infarction. Okay, after this rapid 
seminar part, how to do a proper interpretation of the 12 lead ECG. What we now know is that we have to put a lot of stickers on, the, on Oscar, on our patient, to get a glimpse of the backyard. Yeah, we now know that we have a proper view on the left part of the heart with a standard 12 lead ECG. And what you also know is now the hints when you have to look around, to have a peek around the corner, to have a view in the backyard if there is some surprise, especially for the patient. Yeah? Um, and of course, putting stickers on the patient is uncomfortable for the patient. It is uh, additional workload and um, you will waste stickers. Yeah? And I'm pretty sure that you will only do that if you have a really hint that something is wrong in the backyard. But the best way to acquire a new house is to have a proper look around the house. And that is the same with the heart in the field. If we do a 12 lead ECG, we do that because we want a proper view around the heart. And the easiest way now and in the future will be to use smart technology. And this smart technology is called Cynic I-18, developed by Nihon Koden. With Cynic I-18 from Neon Coden, you will have the ability to have a full look around of the art, the full view to the art, because Cynic I-18 is synthesizing the missing electrodes without any additional sticker to the patient. Yeah, that is beneficial because you will have now this total view in every patient. Cynic I-18 is synthesizing you chest lead 3, 4, five right-sided and also chest lead seven, eight, nine in the patient and will be visualized in a classic picture and also in a picture where you have the position of the electrodes around the heart and then you have a real good picture of the patient's heart. And the next step is now to send this results to the cath lab and enable the cardiologist to figure out what is the problem with your patient. And you are on the way to the hospital. Cath lab will be ready when you arrive and you will cut out time for your patient and you will save muscle for your patient. And that is the utmost important thing. We have to create a benefit for our patients and with proper ECG interpretation and with a pre-notification of the CAS lab, we are able to cut out time for our patient and save the muscle. Last but not least, I want to summarize the content. The pre-hospital recording of a 12 lead ECG is recommended in patients with suspected ST segment elevation acute myocardial infarction. We talked about proper placement and why it is so important. We talked about that we have a backyard we have to monitor because sometimes there are surprises. We have talked about that it is necessary that pre-hospital staff is able to do a proper interpretation of the 12 lead ECG. And I'm pretty sure that with a little bit of training it will be no challenge for no pre-hospital provider to do that. And if we spot nasty elevation myocardial infarction in the field, there is a recommendation that we have to alert the CAS lab. And today we have the te technology to do that. And by the way, technology, Oscar and I am now finished and we want to call back Kai Uwe with the smart device and telling us a little bit more about Cynic I-18 and the first smart device with this item. Oscar, let's call Kai. Thank you, John, for this interesting lecture. You're welcome. We have learned um, a lot about uh, the 12 lead ECG in the pre-hospital setting. I have brought uh, with me the CardioLife EMS defibrillator, which is one of the ecosystems of Neon Colon that uh, provides six additional synthesized leads to find out about right-sided or posterior infarctions. Um, we also have patient monitors and EZGs in the portfolio that have the same Cynic Eye functionality to uh, improve the patient outcome.
Hey Kai, Oscar and I spotted some interesting questions here. Do you want to answer them? Yes, of course. Thanks for the hint, John. So um, please send in your questions. We are uh, very glad to answer them now. And uh, thank you again for this lecture, John. You're welcome. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for your participation and for staying with us. For those who just arrived, welcome to our seminar on how to improve ECG interpretation with new perspectives. We had an interesting lecture about correct electrode placements, DNA evaluation and additional leads. In the next part, we will develop the ECG topic and go through some ERC and ESC guidelines. Enjoy the following clip about ACS assessment and I'll be back in a minute for the debriefing. Welcome back. Let us go through some tools we used in the clip. We will start with Sampler, a systematic method to identify the medical history of a patient. The S of Sampler stands for signs and symptoms. A means allergies, M for medications, P is past medical problems, L is the last oral intake, E stands for events preceding, R for risk factors. Sampler questions can be asked to any awake patient or relatives. If critically ill patients show signs of life, the initial treatment according to the ABCDE algorithm is a quick and efficient assessment. A stands for airway, B stands for breathing, C stands for circulation, D stands for disability, and E for exposure. Basically, it follows the principle, treat first what kills first. The approach is widely established and experts in emergency medicine recommend the algorithm. It likely improves outcomes by helping healthcare professionals focusing on the most life-threatening clinical problems. The treatment can be initiated without equipment. More advanced procedures can be applied by emergency medical staff upon arrival or of course at a hospital. As we saw in the clip, early monitoring of vital signs is recommended. It includes attaching a pulse oximeter, monitoring the ECG and measuring the non-invasive blood pressure. During B breathing, the paramedics applied the CAP1 capnography sensor to measure ventilation in the lungs. Within C, we are going to check the circulation and therefore it is recommended to have an early 12 lead ECG recording for patients with primary chest pain. Remember our patients with primary chest pain? He will be back in a minute, in the next clip, where our paramedics will record an early 12-lead ECG. Enjoy the clip and we see us in a minute and go through some ECG guidelines.
The recent guidelines for the management of acute coronary syndromes in patients without persistent ST segment elevation from the European Society of Cardiology, also called ESC, have been released earlier this year. In there, the central diagnostic tool for ACS is the 12-lead ECG. It is highly recommended to obtain it within 10 minutes after the first medical contact with the EMS or the arrival in the emergency room. Time is essential in here. The chapter 331, Diagnostic Tools Electrocardiogram, outlines the usage of additional leads. I quote, if the standard leads are inconclusive and the patient has signs or symptoms suggestive of ongoing myocardial ischemia, additional leads should be recorded. Left circumflex artery occlusion may be detected only in V7 to V9 or right ventricular myocardial infarction only in V3R and V4R. In patients with suggestive signs and symptoms, the finding of persistent ST segment elevation indicates STEMI, which mandates immediate reperfusion. Additional ECG leads usage is classified with class 1, level C. In class 1, the related wording to use is recommended or indicated. Level C means consensus of opinion of the experts and or small studies, retrospective studies, registries. We can find a more detailed description about myocardial leads in the fourth universal definition of myocardial infarction guidelines, published in 2018 by the ESC. I advise you to read the chapter 28 called Application of Supplemental Electrocardiogram Leads. Now we will switch from the ESC guidelines to the ERC guidelines. The ERC guidelines 2015 deal with the initial management of acute coronary syndromes in section 8 and classifies the 12-lead ECG as the key investigation for assessment of an ACS. I quote the ERC guidelines about additional leads with the following statement. Right precordial leads should be recorded in all patients with inferior STEMI in order to detect right ventricular myocardial infarction. Isolated ST depression equal to or larger than 0.05 millivolts in leads V1 through V3 represents STEMI in the inferobasal portion of the heart, which may be confirmed by ST segment elevation in posterior leads V7 to V9. Pre-hospital or ED ECG yields useful diagnostic information when interpreted by trained healthcare providers. Also, the ERC goes in detail about the pre-hospital recording of a 12-lead ECG, the early transmission of the data to the hospital and the positive outcome for the patient. Recording of a 12-lead ECG out of hospital enables advanced notification to the receiving facility and expedites treatment decisions after hospital arrival. In many studies using pre-hospital 12-lead ECG, the time from hospital admission to initiating reperfusion therapy is reduced by 10 to 60 minutes. This is associated with shorter times to reperfusion and improved patient survival in both patients with PCI and those undergoing fibronalysis. This all said, and to conclude the presentation, we can summarize by saying, first, ABCDE algorithm is a helpful tool for patient assessment. Second, the 12-lead ECG with correct applied electrodes is the key tool for ACS patients. Third, the usage of right-side precordial leads is considered at inferior myocardial infarctions in order to identify right ventricular involvement. Fourth, if there is a high degree of suspicion of a posterior myocardial infarction, often RCX occlusion, posterior precordial leads should be considered. Neocodon is bringing its input with Cynic I-18. And for those who didn't attend the first part of this seminar, Cynic I-18 allows you to acquire 18 leads with a standard 12-lead ECG that synthesizes six additional leads 
for V3R to V5R and V7 to V9. This helps you getting a more complete diagnostic view of the heart. Now let's move to our Q&A session. If you haven't sent in your questions yet, you are invited to join us now in the chat box.